Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Good evening, RCF family. Thank you for joining us for our midweek service. We are excited to jump into the Word. Uh, you want me to pray? And then we'll, yeah, please. we'll go for it. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you, Lord, for your Word. We thank you, Father, that your word doesn't return void, but it goes out to accomplish and do everything that it's set forth to do. We thank you, Father, that as we glean from your word tonight, that we'll be not just hearers, but doers of your word. And we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to go back and we're going to be looking at the, gospel, the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what was that? First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 2 through... Was it three or four or something like that? You want to start off by reading that? First Corinthians 15. Yeah. Uh, two through four. Yeah. Says, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory. I guess we can go to verse one, I guess. Uh, verse one says, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Verse 2 says, By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. Uh, that's just such a powerful truth. Now, we talked about there being three, um, how, what do you say, three stages, three elements to to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, one, that he died for our sins, and he said according to the scriptures. So he's drawn from Old Testament scriptures, and he's and in his mind, he has, he has located the scriptures to deal with Christ dying. Uh, well, it's more than his mind. He actually did locate the scriptures, that, 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 and the Holy Ghost gave him the revelation that they were in reference to Christ Dying for our sins. Scriptures like, uh, uh, scriptures like uh, uh, Isaiah 53, mm -hmm. verses 4 and 5, uh, uh, Isaiah 53, verses 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, uh, he said, according to the scriptures, and there's more too, but I think we've gone over some of those, but anyways, uh, and then he says that he, uh, uh, that he uh, was buried and he rose again according to the scriptures and, mm -hmm. there's, and there's scriptures for that too in the Old Testament uh, but it's interesting that it was all according to the scriptures right. everything they did was always based upon old, everything they taught was always based upon Old Testament scriptures everything mm -hmm. they believed was based upon Old Testament scriptures because the Old Testament scriptures reveal what the Messiah would right. come and do, and they recognize that the Messiah would come and deliver Israel, and and of course later on, the Apostle Paul uh, revealed that it was not just the Jewish nation, but the whole world that could be delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, I like this concept in Galatians chapter three, verses ten to thirteen. Um, because it talks about the consequences of sin and death, um, and, but it also talks about our deliverance. Mm -hmm. So that that portion of script, that particular verse that's between ten, those particular verses between ten and thirteen, reveal that man would have to uh, suffer uh, under the curse of the law, mm -hmm. which under the curse of the law brought poverty. poverty and physical death. Mm -hmm. It also brought in uh, sickness and disease. That's right. Uh, and then uh, we were delivered. So, uh, and he got all this from Old Testament scripture. Mm -hmm. So, so let's uh, go ahead and read read that. Uh, Galatians chapter three, verses ten through thirteen, says, "For as many, <clears throat> as many as are." of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, 
but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Now, this is the important thing that we need to understand. That the, the apostles, um, all of them viewed uh, humanity's weakness uh, as 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 a result of being under the law. Mm -hmm. So uh, humanity's weakness as a result of being under the law. In other words, uh, human nature brought man into condemnation because of the law. Because the law says this is what you do, mm -hmm. this is how you live your life. And uh, of course human nature uh, could not fulfill right. the law. And so they deemed everything that was in human nature, the behavior of the human nature, they deemed it all under the law. And so that's why we have so much, when we talk about sin, we're talking about, or when they talk about sin, they're talking about uh, behavior that is condemned by the law. Mm. And when it's condemned by the law, it has a result. And that result is death. Right. Amen. So, uh, and even today, Everything that comes out of human nature is a violation of the law. Mm. So the only way to be saved from the law is to be redeemed from the law. That's good. So when you're redeemed from the law, the word redeemed uh, comes from Lutheran, I believe. There's, there's several words for redemption. One of the main ones I'm thinking about is, is Lutheran. And it just simply means to be bought out of the slave market. In other words, be bought out from under the possession and control of sin. Mm. So uh, now that we're bought out, out from under the possession and, c and control of sin, we are free to serve God. That mm -hmm. means the sin nature has been dealt with uh, by our substitute because remember he died for our sins. Right. So he died as our substitute. And even in, in, uh, even in, in um, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, what does it say? Um, uh, for as many as for as many as are the works of the law, they are under the curse. Um, for it is written, "Curses everyone who hangeth on the tree." Um, not in all. Th uh, let's see, hangeth. Curses everyone that continueth not in the things which are written in the book of the, of the law to do them. So they're all cursed. Uh, and then it says. And then it goes on to say. Um, but no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by mm -hmm. faith. So now there's a new, uh, there's a new way to live. Now mm -hmm. we're under faith. Mm -hmm. We're under Christ. We function now by faith. Um, and then in verse 13 it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. That represents or is the concept of him being uh, our substitute. He took on our curse mm -hmm. because, of, because we all violate the law as it was written. Right. So whether you know what it says or not, you'll still violate it as it's written. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're not under the law anymore. Why? Because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, mm -hmm. being made a curse for us. In other words, he was cursed on our behalf. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes on for it goes on to say, For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Mm -hmm. So the tree represented the, the tree in the Old Testament, people were, were they made crosses out of wood. Uh, there was often times that they would crucify people on trees. Uh, uh, but they always represented this, they always had this cross or X-like figure that they spread them out and nailed them to. Mm. And they did that because they were worthy of death because they violated the law. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when Jesus hung on the cross, they, uh, and, and even the Old Testament talks about being cursed when you hang on the tree. But anyways, when they, when they crucified Jesus, they realized that Old Testament scripture was being fulfilled. He hung on the tree, on mm -hmm. the cross. 
But he made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Uh, that is so powerful. So now we're redeemed. Now, uh, the consequences of sin is that we have to die for them. Right. That we have, we, and, and, and because we die for them, and because we're supposed to die for them, but Jesus died on our behalf, that produces our deliverance. So what comes under our deliverance? One of the first things that, that comes, out, comes out from under our deliverance, and there's so much more, but one of the things I want to draw attention to here, and maybe it's, this is not in chronological order really, uh, but I thought it was important. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the name of Jesus uh, and why it is so important that Jesus died for our sins on our behalf, mm -hmm. suffered, was buried, and rose again. It was because he gave us it was the result of receiving his name. Mm -hmm. so all of that resulted in now we have the use of his name. Mm -hmm. So let's read a couple of scriptures that tell us that. In Acts chapter 4, verse 10, uh, out of the Amplified Classic, let's go ahead and read that. Again, I said. This is a little bit out of context, not out of context, but not in chronological order. It says, Let it be known and understood by all of you and by the whole house of Israel that in the name and through the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, in him and by means of him, this man is standing here before you well and sound in body. Now notice what it says. Jesus is, is now... Um, resurrected mm -hmm. he's now been seated at the right hand of God um, and now they are left at representing Christ mm -hmm. they are the church and he left them his name yeah and that is the result of our deliverance mm -hmm. or at least one of the results of our deliverance we received his name mm -hmm. the church received his name right uh, and in that name and that's why I picked this particular verse because the way the Amplified says it. Because a lot of times we don't think about it like this. We just think the name. But what is in that name? Why is the devil, why is sickness, why is disease flee at the sound of that name? It is only when the Christian realizes what backs up that name, what's right. invested in that name. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, uh, uh, believing in the name of Jesus, that is, uh, that is instilled, infused with power and authority. So, when we believe in the name of Jesus, that is instilled or infused with power and authority, that's what we're believing. We're believing that the name of Jesus is infused with power and authority. So, when we speak it, we're releasing... Mm -hmm the power and authority that's invested in that name. Yeah. We have to believe that. So it's much more than just the name. You know, there's a lot of people named Jesus, a lot of Spanish people named Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even in the Bible there was people that was named Jesus. But it wasn't, it wasn't the Christ. Yeah. It wasn't the anointed one. That's right. It wasn't this particular name. Mm -hmm. See, because it says, it says, it says, let it let let it be known and understood by all of you, uh, and by all the house of Israel, that in the name, that in the name and through the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. See that it's of Nazareth. That's right. Why of Nazareth? because that's where Jesus came from. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about a specific person. That's right. How God anointed, remember Acts 10, 38? Right. How God anointed Jesus Christ of, Nazareth. or Jesus of Nazareth. With power and the Holy Ghost. And mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. It's in that name. Yeah. That it, it's the power of God, the anointing of God, is invested in that name. So uh, 
the authority of God is invested in that name, and that name was given to the church. That's right. And that is what's one of the th one of the results, or the uh, of our deliverance, is that name. Um, uh, when we believe in the power and authority that is invested in the name of Jesus, all creation takes notice. Mm, that's good. Now, I can't stress this enough. When you believe in the name of Jesus, what are you believing in? You're believing that that name is infused with power and authority. It's not just a name mm -hmm. that you're speaking. It's the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's in reference to a specific person, the Son of the Living God, the Anointed One, yeah. the Messiah. That's what makes that name so powerful. See, people use the name of Jesus all the time, right. and nothing. Right. It's like the sons of, of uh, Sceva. Sceva. Yeah. They, there's no relationship mm -hmm. there, because what did they, what did the de what did the devil say? Uh, well, they, he said, they said in that name that Paul preaches, that name of Jesus. So they had no personal revelation. They had no faith. And do you know what else and, he said? After and then that? the devil said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who, who are you? But who are you? <laughs> and then they got beat up. And then they got beat up. <laughs> so the name that they were, see, they didn't know right. what was in that name. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have a relationship with that That's name. Right. They had no knowledge of that. There was no intimacy. Mm -hmm. They didn't really believe in the name. That's right. And what was invested in the name. That's right. And so they were faced with with all that. Mm -hmm. uh, read uh, 1 John 3, 23, and then 1 John 5, 20, 5 13. Uh, let me go pull those up. So remember, when, when uh, the believer speaks through the application of the name, of his name, the same power and authority that was demonstrated when Jesus spoke is released onto the scene. Again, one more time, when we, when, uh, when the believer speaks through the application of his name, the same power and the same authority that was that was demonstrated in Jesus, uh, uh, or was demonstrated when Jesus spoke, is released onto the scene through the believer because of the application mm -hmm. of that name. And that's First John three. First John three twenty three, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. <coughs> what does it say? That we should believe on the in name. the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. That is so powerful. Remember when we were talking about Acts chapter four, where it said it was through faith in his name, mm -hmm. so faith believing in his name, and then First John. 5.13 says it like this. Question 5.13. Mm -hmm. It says, These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It is so important to believe in the name of the Son of God that what are you believing about that name? Mm-hmm. You're believing that that name is infused with, instilled with power and authority. Mm. That's what you're believing. Yeah. So when you speak that name, you realize that authority or, and power is being released through that name. Mm -hmm. That's what the devils fear. Yeah. That's why they fear Jesus. Yeah. Because. He represented that power and authority. That power and authority that was in him is in his name. That's right. And, uh, and so that's why he gave us his name. That's right. And that's why the, the Old Testament or the New Testament believers, as well as, uh, you know, in the, in the epistles, that's why so much is mentioned about that name. Uh, but we tend to lose sight of what's in that name. Right. As they understood it, we are failing to understand sometimes. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, God will give us a glimmer of light that brings us more insight and uh, how to walk in the kingdom of God and, 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 and how to uh, push back the forces of yeah. evil 
and walk in victory. That's good. Uh, 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 <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, that is why the devils tremble at the sound of his voice and now tremble and cower at the use of his name. And sickness and disease flee uh, the body uh, of the oppressed, delivering people from the author of sickness and disease, which is the sin nature. Uh, that is so important. Can you read uh, John chapter 5, verse 14? Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Now, we might have shared this a little bit last week, mm -hmm. but I can't stress it enough that sin is the origin of sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. So what is the origin of sin? It stems from violating the law. Right. When the law was violated, sin came in to this world. Through one man's offense, what, right. what was the offense? He violated what God said. When, when Adam violated what God said, sin came into the world. That's right. Talking about the sin nature came right. into the world. Th that sin nature is what causes man to sin. Mm -hmm. So God had to deal with the sin nature He had to go in there, Jesus had to go in there and deal with the sin nature, die and, and, and eliminate the sin nature, or eliminate the sin nature, the power of the sin nature, mm -hmm. because it had man under its dominion, yeah. under its authority, and man could not help it but sin. Right. Now we're given a choice. We don't have to sin. Amen. We can put on the new man we can take off the old man, mm -hmm. the old man representing the old sin nature, the, the nature, the unregenerated man, uh, the, the man that was uh, life before Christ, I guess you could say mm -hmm. it like that. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. It says, And behold, they brought to him a I'm man... I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 9, verses 2 through 8, I apologize. Um, it says, um, they, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, it said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? And Verse 5. Uh, verse 5 says, For whether... Uh, whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk but that ye might know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins then saith he to the sick of the palsy arise take thy bed and go unto thy house and he arose and departed to his house but when the multitude saw it they marveled and they glorified God which had given such power unto men so we can see that Jesus had authority Amen. he had power we can also see that Jesus didn't address the sickness or the disease of the man. What did he address? Sin. Mm -hmm. The origin of the problem. Right. Why was a man sick? Well, it's you know, you don't have to commit sin to be sick. Right. Because sin came into the world by one man. Mm -hmm. And and everything that comes out of sin is sickness, disease and poverty. Right. Dysfunction. All of that comes out of it. See, it, ca it came into the world and in death by sin. Uh, even under those that did not sin after Adam, mm -hmm. Adam's similitudes or Adam, after Adam's likeness or behavior. Right. So people don't have to necessarily sin. Uh, sin the sin nature and the ways of sin, uh, the, the rule of sin, the authority of sin, the dominion of sin, is already in the world. That's right. The only way to hold it back is to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. And to, uh, and the, and to have faith in that name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because yeah. why? Why is that name so important? Because it represents all the power he had. That's right. All the authority he walked in, mm -hmm. that name that was in Jesus, right. is now invested in his name. Amen. And when Jesus dealt with this man, he didn't deal with, he didn't say, uh, I heal you. He didn't say that at all. He said, your sins are forgiven. Now, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, if 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 it's not crazy, but I mean, you would think you would think, well, why didn't Jesus just address the sickness? Mm -hmm. It has a name, right? No, he went right to the origin of right the matter. Right to the root of the problem. Right mm -hmm. to the root of the problem, showing us that the origin of sickness and disease, or we can say it like this: sickness and disease, disease travel through the sin nature. That's right. Amen. So men don't have to do anything bad. These people weren't saved. You don't have to do anything bad. The sin nature, when activated, will produce these things in your life. That's right. And so, uh, but you can choose to live out of the, na the new nature. You are, your DNA now is that of God. Mm. You're born again. You have Amen. a new DNA. God was never sick. Right. You have the authority now in the name, and that's just one place. There's even more avenues in which we were given, given the advantage over the devil. Mm -hmm. But one thing we do have is authority. That's right. We do have the ability to exercise the power of God mm -hmm. through the gifts of the Spirit as that's the Spirit right. wills, and and there's other ways. There's, there's mm -hmm. faith, and anyways, God is so good. Uh, we just got a few more minutes. Let's read. Uh, Let's read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Um, it says that if thou shalt confess the, with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God is so good. Notice. That I shall, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. Sozo, Greek word for saved. Yeah. Which is a general word for any type of salvation you might need. Mm -hmm. if, if you're sick, if you're lacking funds, mm -hmm. if you're experiencing yeah. tragedy, if you're being attacked, if you're being whatever it may be, right. you have the promise of salvation. Salvation is not just for the here and after, as they say. It's not just for when you reach heaven. Right. It says that you shall be saved right now. Mm -hmm. It's in the present tense. It, I, 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 there's no biblical scholar or Greek scholar that can deny that this word saved or this phrase thou shall be saved is uh, anything but in the present tense right it's right. right now it's not future tense right it's present tense so i don't know why people seem to think that we have to wait till we get to heaven before we can be delivered right from tragic from a tragic lifestyle that's right or or tragedy in our lives mm -hmm. why do we have to the reason is the reason why we put up well, let me say it like this. The reason why Christians go through so much tragedy mm -hmm. is because they simply put up with it. Right. Uh, and I don't mean to be rude or mean or, or unkind or anything like that, but we need to check ourselves mm -hmm. and we need to ask ourselves, you know, uh, have we just taken a back seat to everything we're experiencing? Right, right. Or when we're praying, are we praying as those people that are now ruling and reign with, reigning right. with Christ Jesus? Because as sin once ruled in our lives, mm -hmm. and as death once ruled in our lives, or uh, had reign in our lives. That's right. Um, as we talked about, I believe, last week. Um, well, now I want to address the fact that Christ now rules. Right. Grace now rules. Mm -hmm. Righteousness now rules. Right. In our life. Amen. Because of what Christ did for us. Yeah. And so now, Christ reigns in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. Righteousness reigns in our lives. Right. And so we need to understand that that we're no longer under the dominion of sin, but we kind of think like we are. Mm. Our minds constantly go lean back towards that persuasion. Because see, the devil's constantly whispering. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a full-time, 24-hour, relentless job that the devil it has. Mm -hmm. uh, that and that is to to infiltrate our thoughts, affect our emotions, mm -hmm. which which deals which greatly influences our our will, and so our thoughts 
when with, without realizing it, we're constantly thinking like, you know, uh, defeated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. uh, we don't give God the glory. Right. Uh, we, we're looking for doctors. Mm -hmm. We're looking at doctors. Right. Um, we're looking, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to doctors. Mm -hmm. Please don't misunderstand me. You should. I believe we all believe in doctors. We believe the third of God. All I'm saying is that it's God that heals you. Right. He's the one that created your body mm -hmm. to self-correct. Right. If you cut yourself mm -hmm. or you scratch yourself and you get a scab, why does your body self-correct? Why right. does it mend? Because God instilled that That's in right. you at creation. That's right. And so he, uh, His power still works to instill in you. That's right. Uh, whatever is bad. That's right. And to remove whatever is bad. Uh, it's through His power. It's right. And Jesus is the great physician. And Jesus is the great physician. I mean, there's so much I could say along this line. When I like how you said that, it's not that we have to wait to heaven to be healed. Yeah. Because when we follow Christ's ministry, mm -hmm. He didn't say, rise up and walk when you get to heaven. No. He said, now, right rise now. up and walk. Something. And Jesus said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth, all of heaven's going to move to bind, and whatever you loose on earth, all of heaven's going to move to loose. So we have the we have the keys. That's perfect. Yeah. You know, if I come up to my house and I don't go in, but I have the keys in my hand, that's my fault. That's your fault. That's that's foolish. Amen. Like when we when you think of that as the example, mm -hmm. and so to tolerate and to put up with what the devil's trying to mm -hmm. infiltrate in our lives and mm -hmm. trying to trying to have mastery over us because of those things, mm -hmm. where we already have the victory, we mm -hmm. already have the keys. Mm -hmm. We just have to have that revelation of mm -hmm. the name of Jesus and the power that that packs behind that, it. That's right. I want to encourage every one of you out there that if you've, under, you've been under massive attacks for any length of time, uh, when I say attacks, I mean your faith is being tested. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to be going wrong. You're applying your faith. You're using the name of Jesus correctly, but yet the attacks are still coming. Your body doesn't seem to be wanting to improve. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep believing God. Amen. Because just because you're being uh, tested to that degree, uh, you, you need to understand the value of that test. Mm -hmm. uh, because that value of that test should spring up in you joy. Yeah. Uh, because when joy should spring up out of you because you know the outcome. Yeah. You know the devil can't win. That's right. You know that he's going to try and he's going to try to do it through symptoms. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to do it through your appearance. He's going to try to do it through your circumstances. Mm -hmm. He's going to hit you and hit you. He's going to try your faith. <laughs> That's his right to try your faith. But what he cannot do is he cannot defeat you. Mm -hmm. Amen. He cannot defeat your faith. He cannot do it. He just cannot do it. Let right. him try, if you will. Well, he's going to try. To some people, uh, they'll go through more than others because the devil hates them. He wants to stop them because they're such a strong influence uh, at the workplace. They're strong influence in their church. They're strong influence. He's going to try to stop them. But don't you dare give up. Yeah, amen. Amen. And just believe in the name of Jesus and know that uh, God is a good God, mm -hmm. a faithful God. He amen. is true to His Word. He will never fail you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Amen. And remember that salvation is in the present tense. Mm -hmm. It's in the future tense as well, but it's in the present tense. Yeah. It's right now. God bless you. We love you. Be prosperous. May you increase in everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. 
we would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.